Researchers and conservationists stress that biodiversity loss due to invasive species is blank. For example, people can take simple steps such as washing their footwear after travel to avoid potentially invasive organisms introducing these organisms into new environments. So it's easy, it's simple, it's preventable. It is by no means blank to recognize the influence of Dutch painter Hieronymus Bosch on this painter's paintings. Indeed, this painter himself cites Bosch as an inspiration. However, some scholars have suggested the ancient Mesopotamian poem Epic of Gilgamesh may have had a far greater impact. It is by no means incorrect. It is by no means unimportant. No. It is by no means we need something kind of negative. That's not the first word I would have thought of, but it is by no means, and here I'm gonna use the bookmark feature um, to mark it for review, and then we'll keep on moving. But I would say it's by no means unimportant. I guess it's about the impact, and so that's the idea here, but it's not gonna be appropriate, satisfying, or substantial. Astronomers are confident that Astronomers are confident that the star, such and such, will essentially, eventually consume all the helium in its core and explode in a supernova. They are much less confident, however, about, when, okay, the function of the second sentence. So we're going to read the whole paragraph and think about the function of that second sentence. Astronomers are confident that the star, B, will eventually consume all the helium in its core. So they've made an assertion here. Astronomer so-and-so recently investigated whether acoustic waves in the star could be used to determine. So it's highlighting something that they're unsure about. So it's not A. It's not B. Is it a limitation on the method? No. Yeah, they attempted to solve but could not. The mimosa tree evolved in East Asia, where the beetle, BT, preys on its seeds. In 1785, mimosa trees were introduced to North America far from any blank BT. And it's another one uh, asking about the function within the structure of the test. The text. Okay, the mimosa tree evolved in East Asia. It evolved in East Asia, but evolutionary links between predators and their prey can last across centuries. Okay, it's showing that despite the long uh, period of time that passed between 1785 and 2001, there was still this link between the predator beetle and the prey tree. It's not a hypothesis. It's a generalization that is exemplified, yes. It's saying here's something that's true in general, and here's a particular case of it. When companies in the, okay, we've got two texts, and we want to know how the authors of the second would respond to the authors of the first. When companies in the same industry proposing propose merging with one another, they often claim that the merger will benefit consumers by increasing efficiency and therefore lowering prices. Economist Ying Fan investigated this notion. She found, she modeled a hypothetical merger of Minneapolis area newspapers and found that prices would rise following a merger. So she found that uh, what companies say is incorrect. Economists Dario Focarelli and Fabio Panetti have argued that research on the effects of mergers has focused excessively on short-term effects. Using the case of consumer banking in Italy, they showed over the long term the efficiency gains realized by merging companies do result in... So they would disagree. They would say that her study didn't look at a long enough term time span. So it's not A. It's not about expenses increasing. 
No, not about different markets. It's an extended period. The following text is from Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. Eleanor lives with her younger sisters and her mother, Mrs. Dashwood, and we want to know something that's true about Eleanor. So Eleanor, the eldest daughter, whose advice was so effectual, possessed a strength of understanding and coolness of judgment, which qualified her, though only 19, to be the counselor of her mother, and enabled her frequently to counteract, to the advantage of them all, that eagerness of mind in Miss Dashwood, which must generally have led to imprudence. She had an excellent heart, her disposition was affectionate, and her feelings were strong, but she knew how to govern them. It was a knowledge which her mother had yet to learn, and which one of her sisters had resolved never to be taught. Okay, so she was sort of wise beyond her years, and she had all these other good characteristics. No, not A. Can she be overly sensitive? No, because she knew how to govern her feelings. She's remarkably mature for her age. She was only 19, but counseled her mother. The following text is adapted from this novel, The Marrow of Tradition. Miss Ochiltree was a woman, uh, we want to know what is true about Miss Ochiltree's acquaintances. So she was a woman of strong individuality whose comments upon her acquaintances were marked by a frankness at times no less than startling. This characteristic caused her to be more or less avoided, so her acquaintances avoided her. She was aware of this sentiment and rather exulted in it, and she didn't even mind it. Yeah, they are likely to be offended by what she has said about them. Caused her to be more or less avoided. Yeah, so they're saying it very politely, but they didn't like being around her. What is the main idea of the text? Shakespeare. Weary with toil, I hurry to my bed. The dear repose for limbs with travel tired. Limbs tired from travel. But then begins a journey in my head to work my mind when body's works expired. For then my thoughts from far from where I abide begin a zealous pilgrimage to thee, speaking about his close friend and keeping my drooping eyelids open wide. So thinking about a friend after a long day of travel. But not asleep, not upcoming trip, not planning an upcoming trip. Just thinking about the friend, yes. Number nine, black beans are, okay, what finding would most directly support their claim? So here we need to make sure we understand their claim first of all. Black beans are a nutritionally dense food, but they are difficult to digest in part because of their high levels of soluble fiber and compounds like raffinose. They also contain anti-nutrients like tannins and trypsin inhibitors, which interfere with the body's ability to extract nutrients from food, foods. In a research article, these researchers claim that inducing fermentation of black beans using lactic acid bacteria improves the digestibility of the beans and makes them more nutritious. So that is their claim. And we need something that would support that. That would not help because those are the bad things. Um, but let's see, less soluble fiber and raffinose because um, yeah, we don't want more anti-nutrients. That would make sense because that would show that all of the things that make them hard to digest are, are um, reduced when they are fermented. But let's just check the other two. It's not about high pressure. And it's not about fermented and non-fermented. It's about just fermented ones. I don't think nitrogen absorbed by the gut is something that's discussed there, so we'll go with not. 10, a graph question. Data from the table to complete the example. We might have to read all of this. Okay, Earth's atmosphere is bombarded by cosmic dust originating from several sources, short-period comets, particles from the asteroid belt, Halley-type comets, 
and Oort cloud comets. Some of the dust material vaporizes in the atmosphere in a process called ablation, and the faster the particles move, the higher the rate of ablation. It vaporizes in ablation. Astrophysicist so-and-so led a team that calculated average ablation rates for elements in the dust and showed that material in slower-moving SPC or AST dust has a higher Material in slower moving SPC or AST dust has a lower rate than the same material in faster moving HTC or OCC dust. So we're going to give an example. Whereas the average ablation rate for iron from AST dust is 28%, they'd want to compare it to one of these two. Iron from HTC dust is 90, yeah, because the whereas tells us we have a contrast. Which choice most effectively uses data from the graph to illustrate the claim? So the same prompt as the last question. So again, we'd probably need to read the whole thing. High levels of public uncertainty about which economic policies a country will adopt can make planning difficult for businesses, but measures of such uncertainty have not tended to be very detailed. Recently, however, this economist analyzed trends in news reports to derive measures not only for general economic policy uncertainty, but also for uncertainty related to specific areas of economic policy like tax or trade policy. One revelation of her work is that a general measure may not fully reflect uncertainty about specific areas of policy as in the case of the United Kingdom where general economic policy uncertainty general economic policy uncertainty um, has um, generally kind of increased I guess but what is the claim here Economic policy measures have not tend to be very decent recently, however. Trade policy taxes. One revelation is that a general measure may not fully reflect uncertainty about specific areas, as in the case where, where they're kind of changing at different rates. It reached its highest level. Okay, let's just go one at a time. It aligned closely with uncertainty about tax and public spending policy. In 2005, I would say that's not true. Substantially lower than uncertainty about tax and public spending policy in each year from 2000? No. Reached its highest level between 2005 and 2010 in the same year that uncertainty, I don't think so, was substantially lower than uncertainty about trade policy in 2005 and substantially higher, yeah, so just had to do process of elimination on that one. Data from the table to support the researcher's hypothesis. Again, we'll read and make sure we understand the hypothesis first of all. When hibernating, Alaska marmots and Arctic ground squirrels enter a state called torpor, which minimizes the energy their bodies need to function. Often, a hibernating animal will temporarily come out of torpor and its metabolic weight rate will rise, burning more of the precious energy the animal needs to survive the winter. Alaska marmots hibernate in groups and therefore burn less energy, keeping warm during these episodes than they would if they were alone. A researcher hypothesized that because Arctic ground squirrels hibernate alone, because they hibernate alone, they would likely exhibit longer bouts of torpor and shorter arousal episodes. I'm going to try the annotation thing here. Okay, so we're going to highlight that. A researcher hypothesized that because they hibernate alone, Arctic ground squirrels hibernate alone, they would exhibit longer bouts of torpor and shorter arousal episodes. Okay, so we need to show that the Arctic ground squirrels exhibit longer, hmm,
well the the torpor bouts um oh yeah okay duration per bout yep 16.77 i was looking at the first row but that's not what we want we want that and that yeah still getting used to this the alaska marmots arousal episodes lasted for day uh, alaska marmots uh, no that's not true Shorter torpor bouts and longer arousal episodes. Yeah, so they're, they're saying it in the reverse order, but this comparison is talking about Ala Arctic ground squirrels. This is talking about Alaska marmots. Which choice most effectively uses data from the table to complete the statement? What is the statement? What is the table showing? Employment by sector. Over the past 200 years, the percentage of the population employed in the agricultural sector has declined in both France and the United States. Agricultural, and these are employment by sector. Okay. Uh, you can't, anal you can't uh, highlight a, a column, unfortunately. Um, over the past 200 years, the percentage of the population employed has declined in both France and the United States, while employment in the service sector has increased in both countries. However, this transition happened at very different rates in the two countries. This can most clearly be seen by comparing the employment by sector in both countries in... Okay, so we're talking about... this transition I think we've got two different transitions so different rates so here it went from 64 to 43 68 to 41 that's pretty similar 43 to 32 41 to 14 that's pretty big 31 to 53 28 to 35 so 1900 to 1950 I mean let's see actually Let's see. It's not going to be 1800 to 2012 because that's the whole period. 1900 to 2012, 1800 to 1900. Who's in 1900? So 1800 to 1900 is somewhat of a change. Oh, but we, we want to see a different rate of change in one versus the other. So 1800 to 1900, we had a 21% and 14%, 27% and 18 So those are pretty similar. 19 to 1950, that goes by 11 and 7 compared to 27 and 22. Yeah, so that's a bigger difference. Leafy, okay, logically completing the text. Leafy splurge is a Eura Eurasian plant that has become invasive in North America, where it displaces native vegetation and sickens cattle. It can be controlled with chemical herbicides, but the approach can also kill harmless plants nearby. Recent research on introducing engineered DNA into plant species to inhibit their reproduction may offer a path towards exclusively targeting Isula, consequently... Uh, to inhibit the reproduction, uh, consequently, chickens, cattle. Consequently, could not not harming the plants. Okay, now we're on to single words. Both Sona so and so and Danielle so and so grew up frustrated by the lack of diverse characters in books for young people. In 2011, these two young writers joined forces to form Cake Literary, a book packaging company that specializes. In, okay. Pronoun agreement. They were. The two works were exhibited. American writer Edward Danticat has won acclaim for her powerful short stories, novels, and essays. 
period. And it Ashford became the first African American to umpire a national uh, baseball game. His internet had gestures announcing when a player had struck out, and his habit of barreling after a ball to see if it would land out of pull bounds helped transfer the traditionally solemn well, bounds. Yeah. In crafting her fantasy fiction, so and so, while her. So we would either, either need two commas or no comma. Yeah, but there's no comma. Uh, there's really no comma here. The only reason there's a comma after it is because of for instance. Yeah, so just no commas. The violins, handmade in the 17th century by Italian craftsman Stradivari, have been celebra celebrated as some of the finest in the world. In close collaboration with musicians, introduced changes to the shape of a traditional violin, flattening some of the instrument's curves and making it... It. Not making the curves lighter overall, but making the instrument lighter overall. They were not the first in England to adopt the literary modes of classical antiquity, however. Some of the most prominent figures of the earlier Renaissance period were also... Yeah. You could say more about this, but the clock is ticking. Basically, however, can be enclosed within a pair of commas, but when it's doing so, it can't be connecting to independent clauses. The way it's being used here, um, ooh, actually the question is, do we want C or D? They were not the, f okay, many writers imitated these, this epic poetry. They were not the first in England to adopt the literary modes of classical antiquity, however. However, they were not the first in England to it. Yeah, so it's going to be C. D would change the meaning. Transition word. One poll taken after the first 1960 presidential debate suggested that John Kennedy lost badly. Only 21% of those who listened on the radio rated him the winner. Blank. The debate was ultimately considered a victory for the telegenic young senator who rated higher than his opponent. Richard Nixon, among those watching on the new medium of television ultimately considered so one poll if we have a contrast nevertheless he was ultimately considered the winner in 1934 so and so okay we have another transition word she was studying firsthand the color saturated style of France's modernist masters and beginning to make a name for herself as a painter blank she longed to return to her childhood home of India Okay, positive stuff about Paris, but still, nevertheless, however, she longed to return to her childhood home. Yet another transition word question. In his 1925 book, U.S. geographer Carl Sauer challenged prevailing views about how natural landscapes influence human cultures. He argued that instead of being shaped entirely by their natural surroundings, cultures play an active role. Okay, specifically. They're saying general and then getting more specific. That's not one that you know shows up that often on the SAT, uh, at least on the past one, but it certainly makes sense there. They're not making a comparison of similarity between two different things. It's, it's saying, you know, he challenged prevailing views and then here is how he did so. Although those who migrated to California in 1849 dreamed of finding... So yet another transition word question. Although those who migrated to California dreamed of finding gold nuggets in steam beds, the state's richest deposits were buried deeply in rock, beyond the reach of individual prospectors. Blank, by 1950, 1852, many had given up their fortune-hunting dreams and gone to work for one of the large companies... Okay, so they dreamed of doing this. They couldn't find the gold deposits. As a result of this, consequently, they had given up by 1852. The student wants to present the study and its conclusions. Which choice most effectively uses relevant information to accomplish this goal? The student has taken the following notes. Archaeologists studied cat bone fragments they had found in these ruins. The fragments were estimated to be 5,300 years old. 
A chemical analysis of the fragments revealed that the cats had consumed large amounts of grain. The grain consumption is evidence that the cats may have been domesticated. Okay, and its conclusions. Okay, that's the conclusion, so we need something that, that incorporates that. Wasn't a part of a study of cat domestication, because they didn't know that until the end. B looks decent. Yeah. B is the only one that mentions the conclusion as a, something that could have been a conclusion as opposed to a starting point. And then 27... While researching a topic, a student has taken the following notes. Emphasize a difference in the origins of the two words. A difference in the origins of the two words. One comes from ancient Greece, one comes from Anglo-French. A could be it, but uh, B would not be because it doesn't mention anything about the origins. You know, it's got to be A because that's the only one that mentions the origins of both words. 